Hey there, beautiful people. This is Mark Siegel, your resident ed tech specialist, here with a Google Slides tips and tricks related to Bitmoji classrooms. So, Senora O'Reilly reached out to me and said, I love the way that I set up my Bitmoji classroom, but I'm really concerned that I'm going to mess up the formatting because all my pictures can move around. Is there anything I can do to change it so that nothing shifts? And the answer is, of course, yes, there's two things that you can do to do all this. So let me walk you through how to do this, and you'll be all set for setting up your own Bitmoji classrooms. And hopefully Senora O'Reilly uh, likes what, what we end up doing to her project. So here's how it goes. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is figure out from her what is going to stay from slide to slide. I'm just going to scroll through her different Bitmojis. So you'll notice that from slide one to slide two, I can see most of the background pictures stay the same. Her Bitmoji changed, so we've got to delete that. Uh, the information on her whiteboard is going, to cha is going to change. I noticed her computer screen shifted from her kids to a Google Classroom link. Some books and things changed off the bookshelf and off the desk. But pretty much otherwise, everything is going to stay the same. Oh, and we got to make sure we keep the podium. Okay, so here's the easiest thing to do. Pick one of the slides, and you're going to copy the slide and paste the slide. So you can either hit Control-C, Control-V, or obviously you can right-click on it click copy and then click paste. And the reason to do that is now we can mess around with one of the slides and we don't have to worry about messing up the formatting on the ones we want to keep. Now I'm going to go through and delete anything that's not going to stay the same from page to page. So I'm going to click out, take out the Google Classroom link. I'm going to take her Bitmoji out. This piece is going to disappear. Classroom code is going to disappear. And unfortunately, I do have to click on all these things individually because if I try and select them, I'll end up moving things like I just moved her lava lamp, some, something like that. Okay, once you've deleted everything that's going to change from period to period or, class, or day to day, what you want to do is select everything on the screen. So you can either do Control A or click and drag across the screen. When you do this, we are now going to group all of our images together so that nothing can shift on us unless we want it to. So we're going to come up to our range. We're going to click Group. Now everything acts as one image on the screen. Once I've got that done, I'm going to hit Control-C to copy it. Or again, right-click and then copy. Now I want to do what's called editing the master slide. I'm going to go up to Slide, and I'm going to come down and edit the master. So these are the formats that are going to be pre-done for you based on the theme that you've chosen from Google Slides. Now, if you chose a blank one, everything should be blank. Make sure that you click on Master, not one of the layouts. Otherwise, you'll only change this particular version, not everything. Once you're on the Master, click on the Master screen and paste in your background. So it's going to take a second because we have a lot of images. Okay, now they're all in. Now, once this is in, I'm pretty good to go, except you'll notice there's one thing wrong with this. And when she did this, and she did it absolutely right, but when they edit the master, you have to add one more step. You'll notice there's a lot of white space back here. She lost her floor and walls when she did this. So we've got to insert that. Now, she did that using a background insert instead of like as a, an image. So we're going to add that to this as well. We're going to come up here to the top and click on background and we're going to choose the image. So I already did a search for a wall floor background, which is a pretty common search when you're setting up Bitmoji classrooms, and I found her image is right here. So when you do this, just scroll down until you find the image that you had chosen for your image, for your background, and then click Insert, and then click Done. And when we do this, magic should take over, and it should all populate exactly the way it's supposed to be. Once you've got that, you can see that if you did this right, all of the layouts will have the same format. Then just X out of this or click anywhere else on the screen other than the master slide. When I do this, I can check to see that everything is right by adding a new slide. When I come up to the top left corner and I click add a new slide and I click blank, you'll see that my slide is already formatted for me, for me exactly the way I want it to. And I can just add the new information that I'm going to be adding when I do this. Okay, so that's the master slide. That's the way to put into things that you know you're never going to change. Okay, as long as everything's going to stay the same, you don't have to worry about changing anything else in the background. Now, if you're going to rotate things from day, from you know month to month or year to year, etc. I'm sorry, or from season to season. Like for example, she put on the first day of school, she's got this. Um, 
she's got the mixing bowl that's right here. Well, I inserted the fact that there's supposed to be a globe now on every slide. So now we've got some conflicts. Or she's got a Christmas tree. If you're going to do those kinds of things where things are going to change seasonally, I just recommend not inserting them into your master slide, uh, like just leaving that area blank when you do this. And then you can insert pictures as you go along. Now, here's the thing with all of this. And this is option two you have for this. When you send this to your students, you're going to send this as a presentation mode. So you don't have to worry about the students messing up any of your backgrounds. So if you've never done this as a pre sent this as a presentation mode, it's actually really easy. Um, all you have to do is click on your toolbar, scroll all the way to the end until you find the word edit. Once you see the word edit, just delete that and put in the word present and send that link out to your students. Actually, you can eat, delete everything from the word edit on. The rest of it's all un unimportant information. So you can actually delete everything and just put present. And when you post that to Classroom, it'll automatically send it as a presentation mode. Okay, so you never have to worry about the students messing things up. Okay, so that's the way you set up the master slide. Now, here's the thing. If you know that you're going to be changing things from season to season or month to month, uh, for example, in the original setup, she had a camera, she's got a Christmas tree, she's got a bunch of things in the background. But in the slides, the rest of the slides, she doesn't have those things, like the globe is always there, etc. If there are going to be certain things that you know that are going to stay, are going to change, what I recommend doing is you can make this part of the master, but don't make your background part of the master. For example, in the master slide, we had to insert a background that had the, this floor and this wall. The better thing for you to do, now I've gone through and I've deleted her master off, slide, off camera so that we have a blank slide to work with. Instead of clicking background, what I recommend doing is clicking the image and clicking search the web and inserting your image this way for your background. And let me explain why. The reason for it is if you're going to change anything about your classroom. So now I've got everything else in this classroom. You know, if I want to keep this the same, you know, everything was just copied and pasted. But here's the thing. When I do this and I, let me ungroup this. Okay, so for example, let's say this plant is great for the summer, but I want to change it to a Christmas tree come the fall. I might not put the plant into my master slide. I might make it something that I copy and paste in and then change it then. So for example, I told you right from the beginning, once you've got everything the way you want it to, make, you know, select everything and group it. Once you've got this grouped, you can then insert this into any of those formats in the master slide. So for example, I might make one that is if I for trends purposes, you know, here is the master. The master might have none of the excess de decorations. It might have no Christmas trees. It might have no globe. It might not have anything. It might be the, just the basics like I know my textbook, etc. But then I might make this first one and make this particular layout my hot, my Christmas layout. Maybe then I have a New Year's layout. Maybe then I have a February Valentine's Day layout or Black History Month layout or whatever it is. And what I can do with that is I can make different ones in my master, those different layouts for different points in the year. And then all I have to do when I get to that point in the school year is just simply drop this down and I can see that anytime title slide is going to be used, that's going to be a Christmas theme. And so I can use that for an entire month of, you know, December and use that all the way through December and then have something different for the new year. So my point is instead of it, because when you lock certain things into the background, it's always going to be there and changing it changes everything. So if you do it differently, where you separate different ones into different themes of the year, it allows you to do more and be more flexible with your layouts as you do it. And then, you, like I said, you can set everything up now and then you don't have to worry about it. You know, don't want Christmas? No problem. All I have to do is take that exact same layout that I took from up here and change one thing and then insert a heart or whatever it's going to be. You know, uh, change your rug. You could change any number of different items. But the, my point is, 
set things up the way you want them to in one slide and then copy and paste them as you need them into your um, into your different slide layouts. The other thing that I recommend doing is make one file that has all the different layouts for your different Google Classrooms, I'm sorry, for your different Bitmoji Classrooms, and then copy those layouts into the format whatever you're gonna send to the students, as opposed to doing all your work in the file that you're gonna send to your students, because if you make one change, you may end up changing a whole lot of things that you don't mean to, okay? So just some tips and tricks when it comes to Google Slide Layout and Bitmoji. Hopefully this uh, clarified things and didn't make anything too complicated. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them below the video. And if you liked what you see, please give me a thumbs up. Have a great day.